morning, everybody. A um, little bit something, a little bit different this morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, Captain Zane Dunning uh, on board a 747 um, with Virgin Atlantic, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're very privileged and very honoured to be on board this uh, iconic aircraft um, on board her flight deck. Um, this is probably the last opportunity anybody in the world is going to get to see this particular um, uh, flight deck. Um, she is uh, due to depart London Heathrow tomorrow, I think that's right, Zane, isn't it? That's correct, yep. We just had a, uh, a, as good as we're going to get, a green light from asset management who are dealing with sales. And uh, we've just got a text from them saying we're looking good for tomorrow. So, uh, all being well, we're going to be departing here tomorrow at 13.40 local time to Vegas. Uh, we'll have a quick stop in Vegas and then the following morning we'll take the aircraft at 10.30 local, their time, to uh, Penal Air Park where it will stay for a, a short period of time where it transitions to Atlas Air where it's going. Yeah, and that is, that is one of the, um, mm. the, 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 uh, the great stories about these, these retiring aircraft. Yeah, yeah. The fact that um, at least they are going to go on to live another life in, in the freight world. Yeah, absolutely. The, um, this aircraft is one of five, which Virgin have had since brand new. There were five that were based at Gatwick, and they were initially destined for Aeritalia. And uh, they... Uh, pulled out of the sale very late on in the game and then we, we kind of stepped in. So we bought these all brand new. Um, so these are approximately just under 20 years old, I believe. And um, so when we got them, because they were quite late on in their stage of development, they came pretty much with all the Air Italia fit, the Italia seats, and which was, uh, you know, music to most of the pilots' uh, ears. They, they came with their own cappuccino machines, which is very important indeed. And uh, in fact, the first ones even had a little office uh, down by the two doors where the FSMs used to hide away from time to time. Um, so yeah, the five X Air Italia aircraft are going to Atlas Air, where they're going to become troop carriers, and three of them are going to be flying and two of them are going to be used as parts to keep the other three flying. Donor aircraft. Yes, donor aircraft, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So um, it's, it's, it's quite a, a, a remarkable story in terms of Virgin Atlantic and their 747 fleets. Originally starting out, not a lot of people know that they started out with a 200 variant uh, way back when. Yeah, and uh, a, a 100 as well, yeah. Was it 100 yeah, well, as well? Yeah, it had a, a MIA, was a, a 100 series, yeah, it was the least those got, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's interesting. So, yeah. um, so, and that was um, that, that that aircraft was purchased with the help of Virgin Records as well. There, so so it, it just yeah. worked perfectly. And I was reading that um, uh, Branson um, is one of those people that believes in he wants to make profit in the first year. A, 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 a business will survive uh, and, and will be successful in its first year of business. Otherwise, yeah. he's he's not happy with it. And it, and it was in. Mm it was in profit in the first year and it's That's since it. then just gone um, leaps and bounds mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah. and it is it is really a great success story isn't it yeah absolutely yeah i mean um, mm -hmm. uh, 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 to, to think what he has achieved you know uh, as a major airline as well yeah you know like you said you know we started off with a you know second hand uh, 100 series onto um, uh, some more second hand 200 series these were brand new um, we had a couple of more 400s which um, came from Varig, I think there were, there's some second hand ones there and we had Rock which you may know we, we bought brand new as well. Uh, Rock was sadly that was one of the first ones to go um, when it retired and then we had uh, you know these five which are you know fantastic aircraft. Yeah. Now mm. one thing we must uh, uh, people need to understand is that the, the Virgin 747 fleet were uh, planned to be retired uh, yeah. even this year. Uh, in fact, um, as early as because of purely Virgin bringing on their newer, um, more uh, efficient, um, uh, a greener footprint, you know, and everything yeah, yeah. That you can think about in terms of uh, uh, aviation, uh, just having a fresher fleet. So these aircraft were um, were already. It's not a COVID thing, so to speak. No. This originally the aircraft was designed in 1953, and. At the time, it was three times bigger than anything else around. Boeing were concerned about 
the effect it might have if say one had an event or an incident. So it was over-engineered, you know, that's why it has four engines. It has four main undercarriages, you only need two. Uh, the wing spar is like a vertebrae in a wing. Most aircraft only have one. This is at the time is the only aircraft that has three wing spars. You know, so it was really, really over-engineered, which is why pilots love it so much. Nowadays, engines are far more reliable than they, they used to be in the 50s. So, you know, you, you can reliably, you know, fire, you know, with two engines, and that's uh, perfectly safe to do that. So that is probably the green way forward, and the more economical way forward to go is, is two engines now. Yeah, so you've, um, you've heard that primarily these, these aircraft have been uh, operating out of, uh, out of Gatwick and out of Manchester. Yes. Um, primarily flying, okay, just stand by. Okay. Is that actually happening on the actual feed? When you're how far out of sync? Is this something to do possibly with what we were having, the problem that we were having before we Got a sink issue. Right, okay. It's a little like a, a Chinese kung fu film. Quantity low. Get rid of that. <laughs> What's that? Fuel quantity low. Never seen that before. It must be less than 900 kilos in one tank somewhere. Yeah. yeah. 900 kilos in there. Oh, that's just. Yeah. Do you want to see that? Yeah. That's the fuel tanks. That's the fuel, is it? Yeah. We've got um, 8.6 tonnes, are we still alive? 86 tonnes? Uh, 8.6 tonnes. 8.6 tonnes. 8.6 tonnes, yeah, so not, not much. That, that won't even get you to Gatwick at the moment. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah. Just about get you out to the uh, runway? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, GP, uh, are we good? We're back to seeing yeah, everything good? We are good, sir. I can't, where were we? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah uh, 747 history. So, yeah, uh, history. Going. Yeah, so, you know, at the time, you know, obviously, Central Seven pilots are always biased. Um, but from an operational point of view, you know, if you're a new starting airline, um, the 747 can, it's the ultimate, what I would call a Ron Seal type aircraft. It could fly to any of the routes, it could lift all the weight, all the payload, it can land on any runway, and as you probably know, the back wheels steer as well. So we can do U-turns on the runway, you know, pretty much in any weather. So any question an airline would ever ask of a 747, the answer would always be, yes sir, can you repeat the question? Not a problem. Yeah, always, yeah. And that's, uh, and, 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 and the great thing is that uh, not so, not, not, not just an extremely versatile aircraft, but also a beautiful aircraft. Abs so, that's, so when somebody turns up at the gate and they see that they're flying on a jumbo jet, they're flying on a 757, a 767, 737. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 even to be honest with you, you know, the, even the modern jets, the A350, the 787. Uh, as it stands at the moment, somebody rocks up at the gate and there's a jumbo jet sitting there. Yeah. You can just see that huge nose in the glass, and you're like, "Wow, I'm going on a jumbo jet." Yeah, a, a very distinguishable silhouette that anybody would ever recognise. You know, when kids draw aeroplanes, they always draw a 747, and you know, um, it, it's interesting you brought that. The, the upper deck hump, as a lot of people call it, it was. Uh, it had a very checkered history. Uh, originally designed, it was. It was originally designed as a military transporter, um, which is why it has the upper deck. It wasn't for upper class passengers. It was so the nose can open. So we put the cockpit up here, so you put freight in the front. That contract was lost to um, 
Lockheed, who uh, made the C5 Galaxy. So then Boeing kind of had these plans, they didn't know what to do, and uh, Bill Boeing was friends with Warren Tripp, who was CEO of Pan Am at the time. He basically said, well, you know, I need a big aircraft. If you build it, I'll buy it, uh, as legend had, uh, and the rest was history. They thought originally it was going to be a stopgap before when supersonic travel started, and then people would just, they would just be freighters, but as you can see, you know, the rest is history. We're up to the, the Dash 8 now. They're still flying around, and they've only just stopped making them recently, but they, they still make, uh, they have been making them recently in the uh, freight version of these aircraft. So that's the where the, the upper deck originally came from. Yeah, and what a, a, a funny enough, because yeah. that's one of the questions that we had in the quiz. What oh. was its original, um, oh, right. uh, okay. its original design was, like you well, say, they had to, because they had the swing nose, they had to move the flight deck up. Correct, um, yeah. In order to, for, and, and the great thing is, I mean, when you moved, you moved from the 757 to the 747, was it? Yes, yes, that's right. So, that must have been, it must have been like driving a, a, a go-kart compared to uh, uh, going up onto uh, the top deck of a... Yeah, yeah, uh, the, the find that when you first come on this aircraft is, um, it, particularly coming from another Boeing, everything is very straightforward. Everything it, it looks pretty much the same. It's more like a difference, of course, if you come off the 7576 onto this. Um, the big transition is the height uh, of the cockpit. So when the main wheels touch down, you're actually about six stories high up in the air. Um, and also, you don't get the sensation of speed because you're quite high up. That comes into play when you are vacating runways and you go to make a turn off and you, you think you're uh, going a lot slower than what you really are. Um, but like everything, you get used to it very quickly. Then when you go back on something smaller, I, I sat on the flight deck of a 7-8 the other day and it, it felt like I was in a go-kart, not just close to the ground, but it, it, I got a, a much more of a sensation of speed, you know, when we were running down the runway on it, yeah. So when you, uh, when you moved from, um, from I mean, it, 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 it must be just a, 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 an honour for any pilot to come from a twin-engined aircraft onto the Queen of the Skies and, and, and to fly for, for, yeah. for such a great airline like Virgin Atlantic, you must yeah. have been absolutely you know, really happy about that. Yeah, absolutely, Jerry. You're right. It is a it's a privilege, and it's a, it's an absolute honour to fly this aircraft. I, I'm extremely lucky to uh, to fly it, and I'm very quite sad to see it go. Actually, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, of so, course. And, and, and yeah. of course, for those people who don't know, Stuart uh, Rawlinson and Carl Walk uh, were involved with the. Um, they yep. moved on now from Virgin. Now they very very luckily they've got uh, they've got other positions with other airlines. Yep. Um, you yourself. Yeah. Uh, now involved with the um, the final two 747s, we're That's on right. um, Lip now, yeah. um, and uh, and then uh, Pretty Roy. Roy. Yeah, uh, next Roy, Roy yeah. is going to be going out next um, on the next, 16th. Next uh, Roy's so, yeah, heading out. This yeah. one's going out tomorrow. So right. it must be um, kind of bittersweet for you when you take her out. And I, her, of course. I think you've you've coined it perfectly. Um, bittersweet is the word. It, it, it's a uh, it's a tremendous honour to uh, fly the aircraft uh, to their final, uh, you know, resting places, and also, you know, to me, I'm, you know, getting soppy in my old age. I, f I feel like all the people that Virgin have had to sadly say goodbye to, or see you later to, you know, I feel like we're kind of carrying them on board every time we fly. And um, but hopefully, uh, most of you will be back very soon. So yeah, yes. bitter. Absolute bittersweet honour, and uh, in fact, uh, Mark Thacker, who's done uh, you know most of the flying with me, he he caught me the other day when we got off Gal, um, knowing Gal was the first one that we delivered, knowing what her fate was, I she was going to be a donor aircraft. We were, as we we're getting off the aircraft, we I think we we both kind of we're all having a bit of a moment <laughs> as we we're getting off the aircraft. But you know, it, it's uh, it's amazing how what an emotive reaction that this aircraft has. You know, and I said, you know when we drove up to the aircraft in the car and, uh, you know, I was kind of smiling to myself and I clocked your reaction as we, uh, as we approached the aircraft and it does, it's, it's that aircraft that just gets everybody going and everyone reacts to it and, you, you know, you it's really sad. You can't but be emotionally uh, attached to an aircraft like this if you're in any way into aviation. Yeah, absolutely. regardless of how how old you are as well. I mean, obviously, it's the, the the older you get, the more the more sentimental it is, you know. Yeah. But, um, but what I was noticing um, 
when we walked when I walked in here was uh, I've been on many 747 flight decks. Um, interesting to see how um, how she's yeah. she's pretty. Um, when you look at the A350 flight deck, for example, yeah. it's it's just incredible in terms of its, its its technology, in terms of its screens, how big they are. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but this is still a very advanced flight deck. Yeah, the, I mean the the 350 uh, that we just saw on the way out. That that is it's like a you know Microsoft dream in there, isn't it? It's absolutely yes. stunning. The, these were the first, you know, kind of first generation of when we went to glass screens. In fact, these have got liquid crystal displays. But when we first got them, they actually had cathode ray tubes, you know, and that you, you could probably warm your hands up them in the winter. Um, that, but so it is still they you can be reluctant. To when you install changes, because that generally means uh, certification and training for pilots as well. Um, so they, they will tend to not uh, update much until you get a, a, a new a, a new airframe, basically. So your plan is uh, is to obviously remain um, with Virgin. Yep, absolutely. And, yeah. um, looking to move on to the uh, 787, staying on the Boeing's. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so at, at the moment, Touchwood. If anything changes um, due to what, once these are all finished and we've delivered the last one, Roy, um, after Christmas, uh, we'll start our 787 courses. Yeah. Okay, so I think now what we're going to do, let me just have a quick uh, look mm -hmm. to our right here, folks. We do have uh, Roy parked up to our right just to show you. There she is. Uh, in all her glory, got both 747s parked up next to each yeah. other. Um, and that will be a momentous day when uh, when she goes out, um, and of course we'll be catching that live next week uh, on Wednesday. Um, I think we're done in here. Zane. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to uh, nip down to something that not a lot of people see, uh, and that's mm. the avionics bay. Uh, something that's very interesting because if you can just explain to to the audience. Um, uh, 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 um, the, the, all of these panels are powered, um, and, and obviously the, 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 you, you haven't got room in the flight deck, is that Yeah, right? uh, basically what you're looking at here, because we're quite tight for space, as you've seen, the, these are just all control panels. So all the main, um, the actual hardware, heavy duty, is actually downstairs below the upper class section. Um, and all they're, they're all racked in there, like an old kind of uh, hi-fi stack system you used to have. They're all racked there. And that's where all the, the, the main bits are. It, the air will have to get cooled, so all the nice air-conditioned air, which gets replaced every 30 seconds to 90 seconds, um, will go through um, all the racks in here. It will go out through all the avionics, and then that air that's subsequently heated thereafter will go into the forward cargo hold. And so it's all kind of uh, self-sufficient. Yeah, yeah, so so so, 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 so it's um, uh, recycled, so to speak, yeah. in, in some ways. Um, and, and we were talking um, just briefly about the um, the, the uh, separate um, uh, 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 room that the pets have at the back. Yeah, that's uh, we have two main holds which are split in half, so they're numbered one to four, and then right in the towel, that's called the bulk hold, and you have that has its own supplementary heating. Um, which we kind of have a binary switch to turn on here, um, but then you can adjust the temperature thereafter when you carry uh, livestock. It always travels in the back there. Right. Mm. Okay. Um, right. So let's. Um, we're going to head down into the um, into the premium. Uh, is it or the but premiums behind where the stairs are, and yes. upper is right in the nose. Right. Upper is right in the nose. We're going to yeah. go there, and it's just as you walk through into there that we will see that avionics way. Yeah. Make sure I don't fall. Make through sure you don't fall through there, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, folks. We've got Gareth here with us. Say hello, Gareth. <laughs> hello. Hey. <laughs> um, and so there, yeah, we, we are on the upper deck here, folks. Um, so it's it's you know a lot of people sort of think that um, that they would expect to see the same sort of seating as you're getting downstairs, um, but um, but this is just um, I guess it's just yeah. We, we used to have upper class upstairs, didn't we, when we had that's right. It's config seven fours out of out of Heathrow. Uh, but we've the, the, the seven remaining 747s that we had in the fleet as of the start of this year were all 
uh, flew our leisure routes. Yes. So mm. we had them uh, with a smaller upper class cabin, just 14 seats down in the nose, which we'll see in a second. And 66 premium economy, I think. Six. Three, seven, three. 300 yep. something. Oh, <laughs> all together. Uh, uh, yeah, so yeah, in total 456. 456. Exactly. In total, well, yeah. You, you do the maths, yeah. Jerry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, mm. self sufficient, it's its own galley up here as well, is it? Yeah, there's a galley there, there's a lift as well, which um, the cabin crew will transport carts uh, up and down. Oh, I see, oh, I see. And, um, and what about yeah. the crew rest? Cruis is all the way down the town. We can show you that if you like. Is it? That would be yeah. quite good for, for people to yeah. see if we can. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, okay. sure. I'll follow you, sir. Mm. So come around here. This is generally where all the entertainment is controlled by the crew. Wow. There's a little uh, laptop that comes out there. Wow. And so you can send um, messages to seats and um, that's where they control all, all the entertainment. Interesting. Yeah. It's quite small really when you think about the, uh, what it's putting yeah, out yeah. there for people. Yes, indeed. Mm. So best ever 747 fact is that the first power flight ever in 1903 by the Wright brothers could have fitted inside the economy section of a 747. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that's a, uh, yeah. a pretty cool like, <laughs> factoid. We like that 747 factoid. I think I might have used that in the first quiz. <laughs> <laughs> so I can imagine the amount of people online now who are like, oh, I served on this aircraft. I yeah. You know, uh, I've flown on it many times oh, here, there, and everywhere. You know. Um, yeah. Mm. But hey. You know. So you're going to find it a little bit on the tight side. So if I, uh, if you go in. Okay. Right. Sorry, mate. Yeah. So yeah, you're gonna find a little bit on the tight side. So if you just go in, yeah. and the stairs are gonna rotate slightly round to your left, and then they're gonna go up, and then okay. you'll be able to see. Okay. So which is in front of the bulkhead here? Is it? This is in front of the bulkhead. Yeah. Oh yeah. The the, the, the pressure bulkhead's bulkhead, yeah. all, all the way back there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Right. Great. Okay. Let's uh, let's have a go. Let's see. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Jay, can I just stop you there? If you just look straight across. Yes. See on that panel there that they've taken off for access? You see there's two red boxes yes, next I to that. See that. They're the um, black boxes. Wow. Yeah, that's where wow. the black boxes are. Wow. That's crazy. They just... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be easier to get in than it is to get yes. Okay, so this is pretty uh, compact in here, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, it's low ceiling and everything. Mm. That's incredible. Mm. Tiny little room. So could you really, I mean, uh, do, do you really get the chance to sleep? I mean, is it? This is where, this is where the cabin crew sleep. We have a different uh, section, which is behind the flight deck. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you find uh, on flights that require rest, you might have say two and a half to three hours off and um, yeah particularly on night flights there we go mm. there you go ladies and gents mm. okay this is going to be interesting mm. i'm going to have to literally reverse mm. <coughs> It's like loosening screws a bit. I <laughs> yeah. don't know you come across. I don't know how you come across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. It's lovely. It's a nice natural it's just conversation, isn't it? Mm. It is good. Lots of out. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're right, Jerry. You made it. You made it back alive. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> is folks mm -hmm. that um, on Wednesday of next week we're going to have a, uh, a full walk around uh, 
Vroy yep. uh, air mm -hmm. side. Um, okay. yep. Due to uh, restrictions today, we're not able to go outside onto the onto the onto the tarmac, so to speak, mm. and walk around the aircraft. We're going to do it next week. Um, but I tell you what, we have got is something very special for you. Um, let me just see if I can. So what we've got something very special for you now, folks. Um, we're gonna go inside the hangar with Virgin Atlantic, and we're gonna see the next generation of their aircraft, um, which is the A350. We've got a 787 sitting outside, if she's still there. Um, but I think you're gonna be pretty amazed when you see what we see um, as the, uh, as the, like I say, next generation of aircraft with Virgin Atlantic. Obviously been in operation for, for some time now, um, but um, but it's a great thing to see. So what we're gonna do, Jilly, are you able to run that? Uh, that, that uh... Okay, so let's get up to, yeah, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play out that piece. Yeah. Uh, it's 12 minutes long. Yeah. Is our man available to? I'll give him a shout now. Yeah, if you yeah. give him a shout now, we'll, do, we'll, 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 we'll stall that for a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Walk up to the uh, to the entrance. I mean, I guess, uh, I guess saying it's, it's a little bit eerie. Normally when you've been coming on board these aircraft, it's, it's full of passengers. Yeah, it's full of absolutely. Life, yeah, it? when, when you, know? you sort of fire them empty as well, it, it is definitely very, very eerie. Yeah. Yeah. It's like being. It's, like, it's almost like um, going back to your school. <laughs> uh, during, yeah. During, I, go, I don't during get told off on here though. Or something. <laughs> yes. Hey, let's just have a look up front. Yeah. Um, so. Mm. This is premium though. economy, isn't it? In here. Yeah. This is the premium cabin here. Yeah. Mm. So if um, somebody wants themselves mm. a. Way over now, so. a, a super yeah. couch for their house, then uh, yeah. <laughs> um, put an offer in now. Oh, this. Mm. So, uh, this, uh, of course, is. Um, I'm guessing you're going to close this up, or are you going to. Uh, yeah, we're going to. Oh, okay, avionics bay. Yes, of course, folks, my apologies. Mm. This is. Um, this is. So, this is. So, it's just at the walkthrough point, it's just an access hatch. Um, and. Inside there, Zane. Yeah. Wow. So they're the CD racks that I was telling you about. Yeah. That's what all the uh, main heavy duty avionics are in there. You can actually hear the cooling system going through. And um, if you look on the floor ever so slightly towards you, this side, you can see the hatch, the uh, further hatch there, which um, can take you outside. And that's and just behind the front undercarriage. That is literally just behind the nose wheel. And that is a uh, plug door, so that pressurizes itself. Yes. Um, in fact, pretty much all the doors on the aircraft are plug type doors, except for the cargo doors. That's incredible. That's mm. incredible. Mm. Wow. Well. Jerry, I've got a little gift for you before we step up the aircraft. Okay, what's that, mate? I just picked it up off a seat. That's a souvenir Virgin Atlantic sit bag. Oh, thank <laughs> you so much, Steve. <laughs> this is what I've always wanted. <laughs> You're a legend. Uh, probably the yeah, last yeah. person to, uh, to receive one off this aircraft. Um, listen, folks, what we're going to do now is we're going uh, to play out this, um, this piece um, that we put together uh, for Virgin Atlantic and for Big Jet TV, um, just in... Um, memorandum really of their, uh, their 747 fleet. Um, it's about 12 minutes long, stick with us. Uh, we're gonna basically jump in the, in the, um, the uh, land vehicle and uh, get ourselves over to the hangar where we will be live with VDOT uh, A350-1000 with Virgin Atlantic. And uh, you're gonna see some great stuff here. So stick with us and uh, we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, GP, run VT.
job. Round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. Hello there, I'm Jason Wright. I'm an aircraft maintenance supervisor here at Virgin Atlantic. Behind me is one of our A350 1000s. It's currently here on a maintenance input having its upper class seat install. Let's take a look. As we approach the aircraft, obviously from the rear, you can see from the end of the aircraft here, we have our APU exhaust, which is our titanium area here. So what we'll do is if you look up at the stab, we've got static wicks that sit at the end of the, of the extremities. You'll find these across the aircraft. These are what we use to dissipate electronic charge during flight. Uh, we're just making sure that they're all intact, which we can see that they are. Uh, we'll then walk towards our APU bay area. As you can see, two great big doors there. That's where our uh, auxiliary power unit will live. This supplies obviously the um, pneumatic supply and electronic supply when we haven't got ground power. Uh, again, there's no signs of any leakage, no drains. We've got drain holes and drain masts. We all look good there. We'll then continue to walk underneath the fuselage itself. These two doors here you may see, these are our stab bay access doors. So we have a giant actuator that will drive our horizontal stabiliser up and down to trim it in flight. This is a, all part of our toilet system, it all lives inside our bulk cargo bay area. Again, we'll do maintenance on that on regular intervals, making sure it's all clean and operating sufficiently. Again, we walk forward. We have our tail strike indicator here. Interesting. So obviously it's such a long fuselage, you want to know if you've had a tail strike, that's our indication there. So that's got a sensor in it, has it? Yeah, basically it'll have a dual loop sensor. Um, you can go with one loop degraded because sometimes one may just go naturally. But you strike that, both will go, you'll get a reading. You'll know about it in the flight deck. You're warning up there. So it's a physical strike. It's actually if it physically, physically hits the strikes. ground. Wow. You'll damage the antenna and then away it goes. Wow. Uh, this is our bulk cargo area. Again, the ground handlers will store um, our bags, loose articles in there. What's different from most Airbuses is that this is on the left-hand side of the aircraft, whereas the cargo doors obviously live on the right-hand side, so they've moved it to the opposite side of the aircraft. Bit of a Boeing-esque move there. Is that, uh, is that where the pets will go in there, is it? Yeah, we, we actually don't have the system to carry pets on this type of aircraft, because it needs to be a certain temperature and conditioning, um, but our other aircraft will all store our pets there. Right. Again, working forward, we have outflow valve here. We make sure that that's all working correctly. We've got our hot water, so any water that's poured in through the galley drains will come out of here. It's hot because it's heated, hence the decal. Yes. Then walking down. It's quite a long walk, isn't it? It's a very long <laughs> walk, yeah. And uh, what we'll look at underneath the aircraft is uh, belly fairings, any damage to the belly fairings. These are obviously composite structure. Again, it's a brand new aircraft that looks nice and clean. Yes. We've got exhaust fans here. These are from our um, liquid cooling system. So again, anything under the belly, you're looking for any signs of any visible leaks, damage. Again, this is a nice, nice new aircraft, so we've uh, got no issues here. We'll then move on to the gear. When inspecting the gear, it's wheel condition, brake wear, and then just looking for, obviously it's a hydraulic system. So we're looking at all the lines, all the connections, making sure that no leaks. When it comes to the wheels themselves, we're making sure we've got tread, no cuts, no nicks, no abrasions. Again, uh, airports are full of all sorts of damaged pods, that's obviously our biggest danger. Here is our brake unit, it's a lot smaller than most normal brake units. This is our wear pin. So as the aircraft ages, this wear pin will get closer and closer to here. And these are carbon pads, are they? They are indeed. Carbon discs and pads. And what they've done on this aircraft is the aircraft itself only has two hydraulic systems instead of three. So what they've done is in L shapes, they then just applied one system to the brake instead of two. So obviously weight saving, make it more efficient. Again, we're looking at all of our connections, our electronic connections, for any signs of leakage. It's pretty obvious when you do see one. 
I noticed that the um, we've discussed this on the show before that the because the triple seven has a tilt mechanism built into the undercarriage when it goes up into the bay. Yeah. Uh, and the there's a slight offset in the in the centre section. There is indeed. Um, and that's purely to fit it into the bay. Is that yes. right? Yeah, that's correct. Again, you've got to fit this large structure into that cutout door area here. Incredible. So as it goes in, it pulls itself into into the correct position. I love uh, I love the motorcycle style spring mechanisms up there, which oh, is yeah, yeah, literally for I guess to aid it in in uh, in coming down. Is that right? Of course you've got. So what you want to do is make sure when it comes down, you use a lot of the spring mechanism to make sure it over centres and locks. So as you can see, where well, our ground downlock pins are with the red streamers, these are obviously our safety mechanism on the ground so that you get no uh, gear retraction by mistake. Obviously you can see the sensors at the top there. So it basically what the springs do will overlock it and you have to use your hydraulic actuation to then overbreak that centre and away the, the uh, gear will go. So you, um, you, do you ever test the, uh, the mains here, uh, jack the aircraft we up do and, indeed. And, and actually... We do indeed. We have our jack system which is stored over in the corner. What we do, we've got some nice electronic jacks that will um, jack it up for us. We'll plug a hydraulic rig into the aircraft itself. Um, and then we'll have a person in the flight deck who will do the retractions for us. Most of the time that's after big gear work, big hydraulic system work, um, hydraulic, uh, electrical harnesses, because again these aircraft are so electronic these days that one harness has multiple jobs. So we recently um, will do them, yeah, they're new aircraft at the moment, but we do do it quite regularly on the other fleets. Yes. So just looking, uh, just looking underneath this wing uh, yep. before we move on, it's a thing of beauty, isn't it? I've, I'm, I'm told that the apparently this is the largest piece of carbon on the on the actual aircraft in terms of its uh, single piece carbon structure. Is the underside of the uh, is the underside of the wing? But it's um, when you look at the um, the design and the, uh, the how how everything flows on it, it's incredible. Those pylons are just um, these these flat um, uh, bearings. bearings. Sorry, yeah, just. Uh, just incredible as well, aren't they? Just the, the design, aerodynamically um, designed. This is where modern aircraft get their efficiency from. So along with the engines themselves, the wings are what give it the greatest amount of lift, the less amount of drag to go with that. Uh, so they're modern aircraft, it's all wings and engines that are driving these efficiencies these days. Again, with the wing tip on these, it's all great, as well for more efficiency. Smaller PCUs for flaps means smaller boat bearings. Yes. So I noticed that the aircraft doesn't have the flapper on like the 777, is that right? No. Because it's so mainly all out on the on the outer edge, so what, is it? What um, Airbus do is they have a split aileron on the outside. So during flight, the outer aileron will lock and it will just operate on the inboard one, just because of speed and momentum and the moments of the aircraft. So yeah, they don't have the flapper on system on these. Fantastic. So moving on. So what we'll do, we'll go towards, normally what we we'll do is inspect the underside of the wing itself. Yes. Looking for hydraulic leaks, any uh, bird strike damage, uh, anything that may have been untoward. But again, like I say, this is a new aircraft into the fleet. It's got drain holes um, on the panels where you'd see hydraulic leaks come from. On the walk around, we've got walk around lights underneath the wing. We yes. normally check to make sure all the filaments and those are working. Most of the LED, these modern day aircraft. We don't have too many issues with lights. So when you say a walk around light, is that something that aids the pilot when he's yeah, doing so walk it, around in the when dark? It's, um, you're down route and it's dark and you're doing a walk around. It basically light up certain areas that are key to look at. Again, the, uh, this aircraft has a taxi camera system. So you can use the external lights as well to aid the pilots during night taxis. Uh, we'll move outboard. As we move outboard, we are just about to make up the oval panels underneath the wing. Yes. These are access panels for fuel tank work. Again, we do quite a lot of that in-house as well. So it's a nice small hole, you squeeze yourself in there. Wow. If you're claustrophobic, it's not recommended. You can actually get in there. Yeah. That's crazy. So, towards the outer side of the wing, it's very hard to get yourself in there. In the wing room, you can pretty much sit yourself up in there. Yes. There's enough room to move about. So they are inspection panels. All of those are inspection panels. Oh, indeed. That's crazy. So we need to change harnesses, um, sensitometers, anything like that. We'll get access through those. So what's the uh, what's the makeup? Because a lot of people, again, it's another one of those sort of like Mr. Nomas is like you know, 
um, uh, the, 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 the tanks themselves, the fuel tanks themselves, are independent um, uh, 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 bags nowadays. Kevlar bags, is it? These or? aren't bags at all. These are all made up in the wing structure now. Oh, wow, really? So the wing structure is designed and sealed so that you have your, your tank bays themselves. That's incredible. Um, so when you're inside of it, it looks like just the structure itself, but they're obviously treated, painted, sealed to then hold the fuel for your flight. These also, modern aircraft now have nitrogen immersion systems just as a safety measure to remove any of the um, explosive limit areas. When the fuel gets down, obviously the explosive limit goes up, so the nitrogen inertia system completely removes that, that yes. risk. Incredible. Yep, so then walking outside, these are the two ailerons I said. So you've yes. Got the you've got an inboard and outboard. They're big, aren't they? They're, They're very big. long. It's one thing I noticed when I flew on the 350 was just how long the out outboard ailerons are. You can see from those bumps there, the PCUs that are controlling them, those little bearings, you see they're a lot smaller. When there's the 34600, they're a lot bigger. 5,000 PSI means you can reduce the size. And again, everything's so beautifully moulded and blended aerodynamically yeah. um, for maximum efficiency. It is indeed. And then as we walk back around, again, making sure we've got no leaks, no dinks. Yeah. Your lead measure, your wing then comes in for you. So again, leading edges are prone to impact damage. You want to make sure you've got no dents, no damage. So these are all the slats. Yeah, because in flight these will protrude out for your greater lift during yeah. that takeoff and landing. As we move in, we have our refill panel. With a nice big detail there with the jet fuel. So when we um, service the aircraft pre-flight, or in here, what we do is we have to defuel the aircraft. We defuel it from up there. Get your hoses. Yeah, walking in, start to have a look at the aircraft the engines itself, make sure the pylons, looking at your fairings, again looking for any leaks up your drain mast, any signs of damage as we walk forward. It just gets bigger as you get towards it, doesn't it, these it does XWBs? Indeed, it does. Such an incredible engine. And again, you can even see by the pylon itself, so the pylon is pretty much straight out from the wing. There's no sort of dip down towards. Yes. It's such a huge uh, yeah, yeah. fan span. That's crazy. You just look in the back. Yeah. Always amazes me how small the core is oh, for such it's, a big engine. It's nowadays it's just all about pure, fan blade pure technology. Pure technology. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. So I think it's what is it? Uh, about seventy percent of the air actually flows outside. It's pretty much eighty plus these days. Is it? Wow. And as you can see, these are blades here. Titanium. Yeah. Wow. Again, it's a top top guarded secret by Rolls Royce how they really manufacture these blades. Yeah, that's uh, that's a, a, a thing of beauty that is right there. Even down to the intake now, because we've got surface here. Everything now is designed to make the air flow efficient into the engine, and also reduce noise. We'll make sure the sensor up here, so this gives us our inlet pressure. So it's all done on pressure ratio on these engines. So what we do is make sure that we the pressure in to the pressure out. Make sure it's performing. Fantastic. Again, making sure the intake lift as well is free of damage. Yeah. And moving ourselves into the inboard side. So I'm guessing that's quite a prone uh, part of the aircraft in terms of uh, um, impact damage. Yeah, is the nacelle the leading edge? Yeah, as well, because you fly for a couple of birds. Um, they're designed obviously to throw the, unfortunately throw the bird out into the bypass, not through the core to prevent damage. Here's where we'll service. So on turnaround, we've got the panel here. We've got oil servicing for the oil tank. Again, they're big engines, they're quite thirsty on the oil front. So each turnaround we'll service it back up to full. And then as you can see, you've got the fan cowl itself. So underneath the fan cowl, on this side of the engine is all your what you would pass as wet sides, so your hydraulics and your fuel lines. The other side is where your EEC, the 
the heart of the engine lives, that's all your um, wiring harnesses. Again, Volvo's always do a great job of making it very user friendly for us. So how, um, how, uh, how far can you go in terms of on-wing on repairs um, before so, you have to call in the boys from Rolls-Royce? So for us... And girls, of course. Yeah, we're, what we do is obviously like the line replaceable units, harnesses, uh, any sort of piping. Normally we get Rolls-Royce in there, um, mostly for the internal stuff. And at that point, we usually change the engine, send it off to them, they overhaul it and send it back to us. Yeah, we're quite comprehensive with what we've got. We've got an engine workshop here. Yes, uh, we've, like I said, we've got pretty much the skill set to do most things here. And uh, and boroscoping as well, yeah. We do our own boroscopes. Rolls Royce will come in for the more complex ones. Yes, but for us, if it's uh, the HPT turbines, uh, combustor sections, things like that, we do that in house. Our guys are all qualified for that. Perfect. Um, and then just a little trick here: the drain mask will be coming a bit closer. Something that we see, we notice regularly of uh, like... Uh... It will even tell you where your leak's coming from. Wow. So they've got little um, drain lines in set positions. So you can see you've got some hydraulic pump area, pylon, fuel, dra fuel drain tanks. So it goes a little bit of a way to kind of tell you, you where your issues are. But again, that's something we check on our turn around. But uh, that, uh, that drain is, is something that we've noticed when we see the aircraft taxiing out, there's always there's a, there's a certain amount of oil yeah, so coming out. Also, it breathes out of that as well. So the engines themselves are designed to be cruising. When they're on the ground and they're idling, it's yeah. not their happy place. So you quite often get a lot of oil oils that yeah. breathes it out. And then as soon as they throttle up, it, it. it just stops. Like I say, they're designed to be at 36 to 40,000 feet cruising. That's their optimum lifestyle. And that's where their efficiencies lie. Yes. Uh, again, so we're working inboard now. This is your biggest uh, slap here, the inboard slap. Big piece of structure. That is big, isn't it? Again, making sure we're all good. I mentioned your nitrogen inertion system. You see that little green sticker and that little porthole there? Yes. So that's the exhaust for it. So obviously it filters out all the rest of the air. If you want to leave the nitrogen for that. So that port's out of here. Uh, again, as you walk inside, you've got a pack inlet here. Again, with the belly section, we're just making sure there's no impact damage, no signs of any leakage. Walking forward. You can see we're connected to the um, ground air conditioning system at the moment. Obviously, these aircraft can get quite warm. So we've got our own system here that cools the cabin down. Makes it nice to work in. And then we start walking forward to the business end, making sure our door areas, making sure there's no damage to them, making sure the windows are good. We've then got another drain line there with the hot. We'll make sure all of our antennas now on the bottom of the aircraft are uh, free from lightning strikes, uh, damage is stuck as well. Forward. Here we have our static ports here, which is very critical to make sure there's no damage around them. They rely on smooth airflow to do the correct reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, uh, very flush, very yeah, flush. Very important part of the structure there. And moving forward, we've got our taxi camera here that I spoke about earlier. I see, yes, interesting taxi camera. Forward, we're still looking at our antennas again. Sure in good this is our access to our forward avionics bay. Got all of our circuit breaker panels. Got our computer system hidden there. Again, a quite tight squeeze there. Okay, so that's avi avionics yeah. bay in there, yeah. right? Okay, that is a tight squeeze, isn't it? Yeah. So no access from inside to that. So or there is, is it... another access point in there, but this is from the external side. Right. One in the flight deck as well. Yes. Um, but th that's where all the avionic systems will be living. I see. Uh, nose gear. This is a really tall nose gear for an Airbus. It is, isn't it? So again, with the big engines, requires big ground clearance. Yes. 
Then we're going to look at our wheels, front high point leads. We have our ground connection panel here for our headsets. Right. It's currently hooked up to the tug at the moment. Everything's just so clean. It is. It's lovely when they're brand new. <laughs> and as we move forward, we've still got more sensors here. We've got our pitos, handle of attacks, and ice detectors. And obviously the business end here, we've got our radar system, the weather radar, navigation. Right there. Yep. Yep. And then when we go to the other side, the only real difference is this is where your cargo doors live on the other side. I see, yes. So you're just checking those. So here's our ground power point. Yeah. The ground power. Well braking e tops on those engines, isn't it? It is, yeah. There's only a small fraction of the earth now that it doesn't cover. Yes, crazy. And uh, here's our cargo door for the forward. the other side and you just put the off cargo door down the very end. So take us round your uh, can we just have a little look a little look at your uh, engine workshop? Yeah sure. This way. Thank you. So we have our own dedicated team for the uh, engine workshop. They hold the approvals for getting our engines ready to go back to Rolls Royce but also when they return to us they prep them so that all we need to do is take them out of the cage and we fit them to the aircraft. Very efficient. So at the moment we've got mostly we've got CF6 there, but we've got two Trent 1000s. So that CF6 will be one from uh, 747, I'm guessing. It is, yeah, that's Trent it. Trent 1000s off the uh, Dreamliners. Yeah, for 78s. They're, they're our um, biggest uh, engine change at the moment. Yes. So we've got those. This one's going to be the next one in use. So we've built up, ready to go. And then we've got an XWB. So that is what's fitted to what you see behind you. Is that a spare or is it? This that... is our operational spare. Wow. So um, you always keep one handy, just in case. But again, that one's all uh, seven inch workshop stuff done now, prepping it ready for service. And you can go and have a look if you like. Should we, uh, let's have a let's look, look at, at this, this uh, Trent 1000, because this is, uh, yeah, because this is a uh, unwrapped, wow, stadium. Well. Look at that. This is just fantastic. So here's what I was uh, mentioned earlier. So this is like your wet side. Yes. So this is all your fuels and oils fuels and, and oils, hydraulic. So this is this is where your uh, hydraulic pump would live. It's not there at the moment because obviously we'll change that when it comes to the um, engine install. And that's again something that you could do on wing. We or? do that on wing. Yep. Yep. So it's perfectly fine for us. Anything that's really on this fan case is um, is workable for our. Our scope. Let's just have a look at that core because that is a. Uh... Oh, we've got. A... This is the uh, proper business end, isn't it? When all the uh, cows are off. It is indeed, and then you can see how, how small the core really is. Yeah, yeah. Just so impressive. So this is where your combustion is in here. This is your, your spray nozzles in here. So this is the bang section, that's this is the, a, yeah. the blow this section is a, behind it. This suck, is a squeeze, bang, suck, squeeze. squeeze, bang and blow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. And this is a, these are your thermocouples for your EGT. So that gives you the temperature coming out of the engine. So as you can see, a lot of the piping you can see is all for cooling. Right. And they're the stator blades, are they, baby? These, these, so these, these are your guide vanes. Guide vanes. So sorry, these yes. will just basically straighten out your air so you get a nice efficient jet coming backwards. Yes. And like we've said, the majority of the air passes this side of the, uh, does, yeah. the core. 
So it is, it's incredibly impressive how technology has come on so far that you just don't rely on all that air. Especially gas turbine wise, it's, it's very good. And then what you can see is these are like your bleed valves underneath these little covers. So obviously the engine wants to maintain optimum pressure and airflow. So what it can do is dump air into the bypass. I see. Yes. To sort of load itself. And this is literally the um, where they're hung off of the pylon. It is indeed. So you've got four bolts at the R, and you've got four on the front and the fan case. And here, these are your thrust links. Obviously, they generate quite a lot of power, so this thrust link's part of the structure. And they're solid, these. They're, not, they're, they're hollow. Oh, they're hollow, are they? Yeah, they are hollow. Wow. So they obviously... Wow. Very, um, very strong. Yes. I'm guessing if they were solid, they would be heavy. That's the thing, it's all about weight saving in yes, aircraft. Yes, of course. But the yeah. final thing, weight saving and, and strength. These are all our inspection ports here. I see. Coming past. So depending on what you want to look at, you can stick your boroscope kit in there and have a look. And of course, everything that um, anything that comes up on the um, on the flight deck, or or actually these days, it's actually at Rolls Royce as well, isn't it? Yeah, Rolls Royce. They, they track everything. Rolls Royce get, get more parameters than we actually see, um, and they can trend monitor, and they can also pick up um, the aircraft engine earlier. Say, look, you might want to have a look at this system. I'll show you where the EC lives on the other side. Yes. Wow, well, a lot that different, is isn't it? Here. That so is crazy, isn't it? This basically does all the controlling. It's a channel A, channel B system for redundancy. That's incredible. See, so, so you really do see the wet and dry side of it exactly. from yeah, this you point of view. You want to keep them separate where you can. Yeah, yeah. And again, so if we, if we go upstairs, I'll show you where we disconnect it from an engine chain perspective. So you can see up here, all of our electric connectors end at the top. And when we change the engine, we just disconnect it all from here, all from the other side and the wet side, undo the bolts and it drops out from there. Easy, really, when you think of the, the you know, the, the old days in terms of, um, because when they build an engine, they have to build into it also the ease of maintenance and yeah. the ease of access. Yeah. And like I say, our, our teams have done um, a fair few engine changes now, and they're very proficient at it. We've got a special bit of kit as well behind you here. This is our single point harness, so it means we can use our overhead crane to actually remove the engine and move it into the cradle. It saves a huge amount of time when changing engines. Yes. Fantastic. Very efficient. On board. I think so. I think it would be a good thing. Okay, we'll go up the steps in and we'll... It'd be great to see, uh, to see the, uh, the seats being um, in there. Uh... Yep. Yes, it's, it's a good uh, shot from up there as well. Straight, he? You couldn't have got that any straight with the type right. driver. Fair play. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just get that shot across there, man. Look at that.
completely self-sufficient here at Virgin. You've even got your own tugs, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. So we can move our own aircraft, turn them to and from the terminal. Look at this. Here we go. You see here's a few of our seats and shells waiting to go on. The brand new seat, applicable to the 350. So as you can see we've had our alpha section installed in the kilo section. The team's been working for the last week or so putting these in. And then the next step is to put our deltas and golfs in and that way we'll have a complete cabin. You can see our high-tech uh, tennis balls down here protecting our connectors. Fantastic. From install. Yeah, it's, been, it's nice. It's a one-off project. It's been quite a enjoyable one for us. So, have, have, the, have the guys done anything like this before in terms We've of... We've done, done similar. So, we uh, went for a, a mod program on our premium economy a few years ago. We changed them out, so we've done that. That was um, on what, the Dreamliner or the that was on our 330s? 340, 340, oh, 340s, okay, 340s, yes. That's a while ago. Um, again, other than that, we the guys obviously work on these seats, they work on our, our cabin day in, day out, so they pick up their skill set from that. Obviously, this is the first time playing with this, this yeah. new UCS suite. Again, it comes in two parts. You can see here it's got the seat. The seat goes in first, and then the shell which will bolt around it. That's uh, seriously impressive. Great bit of machining in the structure. Fantastic. Yeah. And then um, obviously we have the flight deck as well. People are wondering again, uh, they might not have heard, but the tennis balls are to protect the uh, the, the ends of yeah, the... Yeah, I'll show you quickly. They're very... Um... Yeah, of course it's ingenuity. They're I mean, very, they're not um, exactly slazingers, they're no, only no. from the pound shop. So it's purely just to protect our nice little electrical connectors. They don't stand up very well to being trodden on. So this way it protects them. Perfect, perfect. I wonder who came up with that idea. Yeah. <laughs> 16 dozen golf balls put up. Do you want to go get them looking next? Yeah. With these guys that way. Wow. Old Zane's getting his eye in, look. Oh, yeah, hang on, let me shuffle out the way here. Yeah. Checking out the new equipment. So, Zane, come on then, tell us. Isn't yeah. it just incredible, mate? Yeah, I must say, uh, it's very impressive. I'm very impressed with it. It's absolutely stunning. Just, inside. Yeah. That is just, it, it, it's just, it's, it's, like, it's like Star Wars, isn't it? It is. It's, it's a spaceship, mate, compared to the 747. She's a beautiful girl, the Jumbo. We cannot deny her of that, but when you look at this, and look at the, the, the lack of um, buttons as well, just, just... It's very tidy, isn't it? It yeah. is so tidy. Mm. And boy, oh boy, does it smell good. And of course, mm. being as it's Airbus, side stick, no yoke. Look at this for a desk. There we go, again, you've got the keyboard under there. Look at that. It's, it's very impressive. Mm, it's just so impressive. Wow. <laughs> the tiller on the left there, I'm guessing. Yeah, the steering tiller. Crazy. And there's a little avionics bay you can just look down into the. Yeah, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Mm. I'll just uh, pull back and get, a, get another long, long range shot. Get a shot of you in the in the seat. <laughs> hey, you fit perfectly, Zane. <laughs> Looking good, mate. Finally, an aircraft that I can actually fit in. <laughs> yeah, and one that's only what 20 feet above the ground, yeah, and not zero 50 miles feet. Yeah. On the top, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> one careful owner. Exactly. Fantastic. And this is our. They've even thought of us. This is our onboard maintenance terminal. Right, OK, so old. it's literally plug-in and... Uh, we, can, we can do our uh, um, software uploads, we can do testing, we can do all that from here. 
So does that make make this end redundant? No, we can still do it again on the um, outboard screens. Um, but again, it means that we can get to it. And this, this aircraft itself has the um, aircraft maintenance manuals as well loaded to it. Makes our lives easier. And that's flipped through the screens, literally. The screens up in. So if you look up here, we just go menu. We've got all these different sub menus. What we go to. Don't crash now. <laughs> Don't crash now. See, so it just basically means rather than yes. going to the office. And then you've got your sub menu. We can do it all there. through here. We can even print it out on the printer if we need to make a copy. And that's everything on there, including engine as well? Everything. Everything that we need to get this aircraft serviceable and send it out and dispatch it, we've got it on here. Incredible. And interesting, one other thing that um, people have uh, mentioned about the uh, why do they use the, um, the, the the skin on the um, on the seats? This is this is just an option. Oh, is it? So you can either have the sheepskin option, like the Boeing's tend to have, or you can have like just a, a basic fabric. It all depends on company preference, really. And is that literally just a comfort thing, or is that is that does it serve for purpose in terms of? Can't, can't think that it could be anything else, really. Ask, ask the man I know. I, I, th I always find them quite comfortable, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly something that's been um, in aircraft for many, many years, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Like I say, some of our fleet don't have these, so it's the option to build. But it's just the room, isn't it, Zane? It's, it's just very, the, it's just very, the... very spacious in here. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. It's still the basic Airbus architecture. They've just honed it and made it more, even simpler again. Even up to the top panel here. Just uh, reduced so much stuff and put it all, all on the screens, isn't it? Yep. And they've even just uh, put in a new screen page here. So if you want to know this aircraft dispatchable, we just hit dispatch. And it comes up. So if you've got no message on there, the aircraft's good to go. You know it's it's airworthy. What we've got at the moment there is purely because we've got um, CVs and stuff called at the moment. So there's nothing to worry about on that. But on the gate, if that's clear, the captain and first officer know, that's it, I can take it. Incredible. Incredible. I saw the, I saw a rat come up there. You, you, I, I guess you drop it and test it every we now do and then? It's part of the maintenance schedule, so obviously when they build the aircraft, they'll put hours, flight hours or cycles or even calendar days against certain tasks. So a lot of the time here we'll service it do our spin-up checks where we supply hydraulic power to it, make sure it does what it's supposed to do in flight. Um, but again, that's sort of like a, an annual thing every year. Yes. And hopefully never used, really. It's yes, one of those exactly, things that yeah. just gathers dust. Yeah. Not that there'd be much dust on an A350, <laughs> I imagine, but there we go. Not at the moment. No. Thanks, mate. <laughs> wow. Doesn't it smell good? Gareth. New aeroplane smell. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> wow. It's good in the quality of that. Just all the latches. Well, Jason, I've got to say, thank you so much Hi. for your tour. Really appreciate it. And maybe see you in here another time. Maybe we'll come and do uh, one of the... Um, uh, the Gear checks or uh, yeah, kind of gear check or engine yeah, it'd be fantastic, mate. Absolutely wonderful. Thanks again. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, let's just have a quick look at this. Um... Okay, GP. Okay, folks, we're going to sign off now. Um, thank you so much once again for uh, for your time, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow for the midweek show, and then um, we'll be back on. Actually, tomorrow is when Lip is going out, isn't it? Wednesday tomorrow? Lip's going out tomorrow, isn't she? Tomorrow, yeah. Lip. Yeah. Yeah. So we will uh, we'll catch her going out, and then we will be, uh, we'll be back on Saturday um, with the guys here in the, in the hangar. And, um, and then uh, on uh, next Wednesday will be the final flight of Virgin Atlantic 747 GV Roy out of London Heathrow and we will be live and exclusive for that. So thanks folks, look after yourselves, 
and um, thank you Gareth as well really appreciate thank you, your time thank you mate. Come to see us here. We, uh, we look forward to our, to our big show with our, uh, our final 747 leaving Heathrow next week uh, but uh, yeah good, good to have you here. Thank you very we'll much you indeed for, sir. We'll for sure. Look after yourselves guys and girls and um, thank you for everybody's uh, wonderful comments I'm sure they'll continue to come. Thank you Zane Thank you, sir. Yes, wonderful. Thank you, mate. Thank you for all your time and effort today as well. Really appreciate it. And um, catch up with you next week. Yeah, look forward to seeing you next week. We're slightly early to park. It's going to be 1300. That's part from 16. Perfect. Okay, mate. Take care. Look right. after yourselves. Okay. GP, let's go for cut.